Given this news, I mean, you were invited on. We were going to talk about uh, the jobs report. It's the last jobs report today before the U.S. election. Does anything matter anymore today? <laughs> Well, I think, you know, we're going to get lots of different news, lots of different headlines. Markets are going to try and process what this could or could not mean. Um, and I think, yeah, it's very likely that more normal uh, markers, you know, stimulus, um, uh, the, the jobs report, get lost in the volatility for the next couple of days or so until we get a clearer picture of what's actually happening. So I think, yeah, there is a, a real risk that we get lost in, in this story now. But I think, you know, looking ahead, as I say, one would have to suggest the balance of risks are that things um, normalize over a couple of weeks and, and we go back to trying to work out, you know, on the basis of where we are at the moment, what's happening to the labor market, how does that affect election chances, what's happening to the prospects of stimulus, how does that affect election chances, and how does the public react to this? Is, it, is there a sympathetic reaction? Does that give um, the, the, the president something of a bounce in the polls? We saw something of that effect come through when um, the UK Prime Minister contracted coronavirus all the way back in, in March. So there are lots of different factors to, to try and get in. But yeah, of course, when you get uh, breaking news like this, when you haven't got the certainty of what's going to happen, then there's a lot of uncertainty that, that trades through. Yeah, we saw the initial market reaction, as you say, when Prime Minister Boris Johnson contracted COVID-19, and then things kind of started to normalize. I guess the worry here is that it is so close. We're about a month away from the U.S. election, David, and, and that could bring you know, f fresh uh, skepticism, fresh worries to the U.S. election, um, as well as the fact that we're supposed to have more presidential debates. As you say, this could affect campaigning. If you're waking up this morning, what do you want to own? Where, where are you going to hide? Well, I think, again, it depends on, on what you think the outcome is going to be. And I think, you know, in the short term, there isn't a great tactical shift to come through. There is an uncertainty over risk. Our argument has always been that if we saw, uh, if we saw the president replaced, if we see President Biden come through, and particularly if that comes with a, a large swing um, such that the Democrats also get the Senate, then I think there is a possibility that markets react relatively negatively, given that the Democrat uh, manifesto, Biden's manifesto, is one to increase taxation um, on the corporate sector, albeit to recycle that into the broader economy. Um, and we've always been concerned that there's a, a, a risk of a, a, a negative um, equity market, certainly reaction that comes through on the back of that. So I think you know the risk now is that markets start to preempt that. They think that you know, the president won't be able to compete as, as aggressively in some of the, the, uh, the campaigns. He won't be able to compete as much in the head-to-heads, and that could affect polling, and that might make it slightly, somewhat more likely that um, Biden uh, gets forward. So I think there is a, a risk that you see a negative um, market reaction, and so people may try and front-run and preempt that a little bit. That's why I think you're seeing some of the bid that's moving into Treasury, as well as the sort of traditional uncertainty and risk-off from here.